Hello everyone, I am Kristen Onamaker and I'm a history teacher. I'm going to be taking us on a tour of uh, various places in Egypt from ancient times. And we won't hit everything, but um, just a few places that would be worthy of note. So first off, I just wanted to orient um, ourselves by taking a look at this map. And if you look here um, at Cairo, which is the present day capital and biggest city of Egypt, it is also very close to the ancient capital of Memphis, which was established around 3000 BC when Upper and Lower Egypt were united. Now, I just wanna make a point about these terms, Upper and Lower Egypt. So here's Northern Egypt, here's Southern Egypt, and yet Upper Egypt is here and Lower Egypt is down here. Upper Egypt is called such because the Nile River flows from the southern border up to the northern border and so the headwaters and then the direction are related to it. So over here also is the um, considered the delta because it's that triangular part where the Nile River divides into tributaries. We're going to start here um, with the Giza Plateau and the pyramids. The Giza Plateau is near Cairo and the um, pyramids were bur burial tombs for the kings and the pharaohs. The Great Pyramid, the largest of the three pyramids on the Giza Plateau, was built for King Khufu and the other two are built for his son and grandson respectively. You see the Great Sphinx right here and even though it's called the Great Sphinx it's much smaller by comparison to the pyramids if you're actually standing near it. That's one of the things that I found most surprising. The pyramids themselves are awe-inspiring and when they were built they were covered in limestone and possibly there was um, gold covering the very tops. We don't know for sure, it's never been proven. So here's where Giza is, a little bit to the southwest of present day Cairo. In effect, it is a suburb. So now let's head to Alexandria, which is an ancient city, and it's been in existence for thousands of years as well, but because of its location on the Mediterranean Sea, it's also been subject to many invasions over the years. Um, the Hyksos, the Hittites, the Romans, Alexander the Great, the Ptolemies, the Persians, um, the Mamluks, um, so many were able to invade. But um, if you go there today, you will be able to see, for example, this Roman amphitheater, which is always interesting to see examples of Roman architecture. And then this fort or cathedral, or not cathedral, citadel, which was built in the 1400s by a Mamluk um, Islamic Sultan. And it's also interesting to note that because it's on the Mediterranean, this is a much cooler area in Egypt than the rest of it. All right, so if we were to head a little further south um, of Cairo and Giza, Saqqara, was considered the necropolis or the burial ground area of Memphis. And you continue down the Nile here, Amarna would be a place where the um, Akhenaten, who was one of the pharaohs who tried to establish a monotheistic religious movement, if you will. Prior to that time, it had been polytheistic. And after Akhenaten, it also was polytheistic but he was one of the few who wanted to um, make it a monotheistic um, religion. And then you head down to Luxor, which um, used to be called Thebes, essentially. It was the ancient city of Thebes, and it was a location where there were many pharaohs um, and many places where they were buried and honored. So um, I will just highlight these four places in Luxor, the Valley of the Kings, the Mortuary Temple of Hatshepsut, the Mortuary Temple of Medinet Habu or Ramses III, 
and the Karnak Temple Complex. So let's take a look. Oh, but before we do, let's take a look at the Nile River. And I think one of the things, the Nile River is very serene and especially in the area of Luxor, quite clean and the waters are clear. Wow, that's neat. Those are cows rather than I just wanted to play this clip to give you a sense of what it was like. These are felucas on the river, and of course, throughout ancient times, um, there were many other sailors as well. Wow, that's neat. So on to Luxor. We're going to look now at the temple complex at Karnak, and it's an amazing place because over the centuries in the um, millennium of the BCs, the various pharaohs would put all sorts of columns, obelisks, temples, um, sphinxes, statues, as you see in these photographs here. So this is called, these columns here are the Hall of Columns, let me just play this video so that you can get a sense of the scale. I don't know if you were able to see, but if you look here, this is this um, encircled oval, that is a cartouche and it has the name of a pharaoh on it. Valley of the Kings, um, that is the region and the area where the pharaohs are buried. Many of them um, were hidden in history until they were rediscovered. The famous discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb was amazing because it had escaped many of the thieves of uh, the past. And so it was uncovered and the vast opulence and wealth um, were revealed to everybody's amazement. But what amazed me when I was visiting there was that inside these tombs, they had incredibly beautiful, art, engravings, and hieroglyphics um, on all the walls. I'm going to play this video briefly so that you can get a sense of what a wall in a small tomb looks like. you can see all the people inside and you can see the people in the lines going into the tombs and it certainly is sort of hard to get a good glimpse of things because you're surrounded by so many other tourists but you still um, are able to enjoy it nonetheless so um, just know that the high season is December that's where you're going to get a lot of tourists coming um, the summer is going to be the most hot time of year and it's already hot down in the southern part of Egypt anyway, so something to consider if you ever do visit there. The Mortuary Temple of Hatshepsut was fascinating, um, not only because Hatshepsut was one of the only female pharaohs, but also because of the design of her temple, which is so different from all the other temples. Um, like many of the um, temples and places that we already saw, they were covered, the walls were covered with colorful drawings and as engravings, and there were quite a few statues as well and sphinxes. This is the Mortuary Temple of Ramses III, the Medinet Habu Temple. And if um, you see this picture, 
here where we're standing, this is called a pylon, these sort of double-sided grand entrances. Um, over here, you see these very deep engravings. And if you see here, this is the onct, which is the key of life. So if you go down to Kam Umbo, that's an interesting place because that village or town in the ancient times was dedicated to the um, crocodile god. And there's actually a crocodile mummy museum there as well. I'm just gonna play this video briefly. Every one of them holding jar, see the jar. The water coming out. Water make two things. Make ank, the deep life and sun of ruling. The our, vid, our, our tour guide was telling us about the crowning of a particular pharaoh there. Every one of them holding. And then Aswan is a very interesting place as well. And it is currently the place where the high dam of the Nile is located. But it was also the location of this beautiful temple of Philae built during the reign of the Ptolemies in the 200s BC. Um, it also was held in great regard because it was considered the home of the Egyptian god Osiris. But again, you see these pylon entrances here you also see these grand columns and um, there was what was interesting to me about this place was that there were there was quite a bit of graffiti from the 1800s that you could see scattered about. So there are additional resources about ancient Egypt um, that I've made and my great hope for you, of course, is that you too will get a chance to visit Egypt and see these wonderful areas.